This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Throughout the nation and around the globe, from his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network. Today, we are discovering past life regression with my dear friend and colleague, Stephanie Risley. But before we get into that, and we will be taking your calls live throughout the show, so if you have questions for Stephanie about past life regression or uh, future life progression and other types of hypnosis work and so forth, we're going to be taking your calls live. The number to call in is 877-230-3062. I just wanted to uh, bring up as well that... Coming up on August 13th on Dear James Live, Express Yourself, it's going to be passion and purpose. So we're going to be talking about what is your passion or have you lost it? Have you not discovered it yet? And what's your purpose in life? So many people are always saying, what's my purpose? I, I'm lost. I don't know what I'm doing, where I'm going. I, I know I, there's something more for me. So we're going to be doing Express Yourself, Passion and Purpose on <laughs> August 13th, and then we will be going live on uh, the 13th of August, and we will be doing a very special uh, edition of Dear James Live on the radio with uh, Chris Griscom, who fa- is the founder of the Light Institute, and we will be discussing with her all of her incredible work at the Institute and multi-incarnational work and so forth, but today's show is all about discovering past life regression and it's with, again, my dear friend and colleague, Stephanie Risley. And Stephanie is a Los Angeles-based hypnotherapist. Um, she does and focuses work within the past life regression, future life progression, and as well hypnosis work in terms of weight loss, stopping smoking, cognitive behavioral therapy, different mindfulness therapy, many different modalities that are meant to bring about a renewed self, a renewed awareness, and to release you from many different um, issues that might be holding you back or to explain why things are happening. And I've had the privilege of actually working with Stephanie and I should say attending uh, sessions with her. And that's how we met. And um, it was just an amazing, amazing, amazing experience for me. And so I wanted to bring Stephanie on the show. So welcome, Stephanie. How are you? I'm great, James. It's great to talk to you. I know. It's so good to have you here. I've been excited about this. Yes, well, thank you for having me on with all your listeners. Absolutely, absolutely. So clearly, you know, something that I have said about you um, that I think sets you apart in the field is that when you're dealing with past life regression, many people see it um, as, a, as a playful act. And, and I, in, in my write-up for the show with you, I said, and I want to start here because I think it, it sets you apart, is that you're not playing in the past, it's work. And I want you to kind of explain why you have that principle, because I know one of the first things that you said to me when I called you was, if you're looking to just kind of dibble and dabble and look, I'm not, I'm not the woman, the practitioner for you. And so tell me, why, tell, me, tell me why that's important. Tell the listeners why it's important not to just play in the past, if you will. Well, when um, I help people really discover their purpose and their passion, what you just spoke about, because that's what leads to true happiness. And my job as a, uh, as a healer, and I started out to be a healer when I was 18 to be a doctor. Um, but instead of get, being a doctor, the, uh, the all that is decided it was better for me to be a patient. So I got systemic lupus and, um, that lupus almost came killed me, but because I was, by the time I was 24, I was taking 60 milligrams of prednisone per day and lost all my hair, lost my hip joints, and I went to a, a, a health food healer. And that healer 
um, gave me a way in which to heal my body using organic food and and a lifestyle that changed my habits completely. So I am now 67 and I still do, I do yoga, I do all kinds of walking. I have habits that led to a good life. And so that's why I don't just do past life regressions. Yes, I believe in past life regression because when I was three myself, I had bleed through past lives of my past life as a German Jewish doctor. Now, I didn't know he was Jewish then, but I knew that anything that had the sound of Judy or rude drove me nuts because I'd been just in Germany where they would call Juden, Juden, Juden. All of this I found out later, but in terms of helping other people, I had this weird life that just kind of uh, snaked itself through. I wound up working at the Neuropsychiatric Institute for four years, doing the work that became the DSM-3 revised. In order to heal myself, I did 12 years of talking therapy, which the newest brain research proves is a waste of time, really. It's nice to talk to people, but in changing your brain, what changes your brain is cognitive behavioral modification and awareness therapy. And so I use that along with Jungian technique and past life regression. And the past life regression is powerful once you get through the first two sessions where you understand that what you think determines what you say to yourself. And it is your inner monologue. It is people's inner monologue that is so toxic because people now with awareness therapy that, that I help them become aware of are just criticizing themselves all the time and they're judging themselves and they're judging other people. And when you kind of can change that, flip that into allowing everybody to be themselves and allowing yourself to connect with your soul and that's why when we get to the third session and I work in chunks of five sessions and each session is two hours long which I always say to people and and so that's why you just can't whip in and just you know people will call me and say well I just want to find out if I was a queen in a past life and I go you know that's not going to do you any good and those queen lives are not good but, but what's going but if yeah. you boil it down because I want to because yeah. we're, we're jumping ahead and I want to I want to boil down though the playing in the past. The playing in the past doesn't, it, it is nice. It is a very, it is very interesting to find out the connections with other people, but it's how that past life can inform you and help you heal in this lifetime. I deal with a lot of people who have been sexually abused, a lot of people who come from very abusive backgrounds. And when they understand why it is that their soul needed that learning opportunity, it helps them forgive the perpetrators. And usually they'll see that it's a flip situation and that they themselves at one point <clears throat> abuse that person. And I'm, I'm thinking of a, what came to mind was a, a twin who came to me, um, a, a, an artist, an architect who came to me because he was a, um, he wanted to lose weight. And when he saw that in a past life, he had been a great Chinese warrior and um, he had he had killed his first uh, he had assassinated his first in command, who was his father in this lifetime. And then I said, let's go back and see who you left as a, uh, as a widow and the, ch the, the family. He saw that the mother, uh, the, the wife of that person he assassinated was his mother in this lifetime and her son was his twin. And so that was, so that allowed him to actually understand all of this family dynamic that had driven him nuts his whole life. And he was able to lose, I think, 40 pounds and be happy with the, and then he did, he, he worked with me for a long time. <laughs> right. And that's kind of a key mm -hmm. that, and that's kind of a key that point here is when we're talking about discovering mm -hmm. past life. So, you know, people are obviously familiar. Some are completely unfamiliar with past life regression work and so mm -hmm. forth. And others have a very, uh, you know, rudimentary, if you will, understanding of it. And one of the things that 
that I found with you is people will talk about, and they have this cursory view of past life regression, and they don't understand the true benefit or the true connection of why you're looking at it, why you don't just play in the past, you know, what, what its true rooted purpose is to look at your current life. Yes. And, and, and that's where, you know, in explaining that, if you would explain that to the listeners that, you know, take it a little bit further of what I'm saying is, in, in other words, well, there's people, a point it, and a purpose to past life regression. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't do you much good. I mean, people come to me and they say, well, a psychic told me that I was so and so and such and such. And that's, and, and it, it, to have someone else read you, your past life doesn't do you any good. It's the experiential thing. And in terms of healing the problems in this lifetime, that's how it's beneficial. I'm just thinking of a client who's a, a, a brand new client. She's in her twenties. She's from, uh, from Pennsylvania. And when she did her past life regression, she, could see why it was that uh, that she chose her parents. And she chose her parents because they were stable. She'd had a very rough past life. And and she had been a very famous actress. And and in this lifetime, when she went because it, it the progression of doing a past life is you see your own birth first. You remember that? Right, exactly. James, you, I remember that. You, yeah. you see your own see birth. Your own birth. Right. And it's stunning for people to look into the eyes of their new mother and see how they were welcomed into the world. Were they loved? Were they not? And then you see and then you see some childhood um experiences in this client saw um herself deciding to go into a pond and um walk out farther than she should have it was a frozen pond and she fell in when she was five and she knows she said oh my god i did that on purpose now she was called the drama queen of the family in point of fact and she got you would get mad in point of fact she was the drama queen of the family <laughs> <laughs> exactly right so I and, did it on and purpose. <laughs> uh-huh and that allowed her to give up all of the anger at her very concerned parents. You know? <laughs> Interesting because of course this was playing out a second time but in a in a uh yeah in a new form in, in a, a new, new form. Right. And, yeah, and, so and so that she saw herself as a very famous actress in a past life and now she's a filmmaker in this lifetime because she wants to get behind the camera. So anyway, she's <clears throat> so and it'll help her just allow herself to appreciate the parents that she has and she was born into a very wealthy family. So she has the benefits of that instead of being a starving actor on the road in a Shakespearean company, you know, struggling. And that's right. what she was before. And people come to you from many different modalities. I mean, everything from weight loss to stopping smoking to, you know, stress issues and eating their hands away. Eating that disorders. Was, yeah, exactly. Different disorders and so forth. Mm -hmm. And tell me, tell the listeners how past life regression and we're focusing on that. I know that that's, you know, not your your sole modality by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Stephanie is a very. Um, multifaceted practitioner. So, but the, today's show is focusing on past life regression and the mm -hmm. discovery of that. Mm -hmm. And how, when, when these, when you utilize, when you implement past life regression, how it unlocks awareness of, because what's fascinating to me with it is when you look at a past life and you're doing this work and you then start seeing how, oh, this person in that life was, you know, it might be my brother in that lifetime, but it's really my mother in this lifetime. And it's an instantaneous awareness and recognition. It's something internal. You, you, you just instinctively know it. And yes. how that then brings about assistance and change and, and so forth in the current incarnation that you're living. Yes, well, it's the the seeing. I mean, I'll just use myself as 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 an example. I had a a, a uh, it turns out a psychopathic mother who um, is a very beautiful nurse, and and she went after my two. And these are these are broad thing. My my father, who was a uh, a fairly wealthy and um, uh, flyboy in, in Australia, and the two of them they hooked up. <laughs> In Australia, and and she came to the United States, and and then 
Um, she had children when she didn't really, she was a, uh, not a good mother and she, and I was born to her. Now, as soon as she looked at me and, um, and a psychic, uh, um, actually told me this, um, Sheila, <laughs> she right. said, your mother hated you. And, but when I did the regression with Brian Weiss, who is my teacher and my mentor, right. um, uh, I saw that in a past life, I was a uh, an Incan uh, uh, priest, and right. my job as a priest, and I'm totally handsome, and I must. That's why I like Latin men. I think because I'm looking at my arm, <laughs> going, "Oh, that is some nice arm." But um, so they're dragging. So it's 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 uh, the it's a huge. Whenever in the in in any of the South American tribes, when when one of the stronger tribes takes over the lesser tribe, they have to behead the king of that tribe, the leader of that tribe, to symbolically tell the people of the of the tribe that they're going to um, to absorb that they their their leader is gone you are now ours and so they're dragging this fighting fierce warrior king toward me and my job is to just behead him right and so I reach Simple across enough, my, right <laughs> my, that's my job that's my job it is my job and, but even if it's your job you have to go to the tribunal um, right. <laughs> so it's not good to kill right you know so uh, there'll be some there'll be some hell to pay with what's going on today in these yeah. in the world but anyway yeah. so I reach across my chest and I grab this gigantic um, dagger that is encrusted it in gold and jeweled and turquoise and all this thing and and I just sl- and I grab the guy's head my, and I look into the eyes and I go oh my god that's my mother mm. and so I decapitate him but um, so in this lifetime I you know there's not just one purpose and it is the one of the purposes that I wanted to um, to take care of was to get my mother to forgive me well that didn't happen but I was able to forgive her for uh, the verbal and mental and physical abuse that she heaped on my tiny little body because she was somewhat of a psychopath mom and if for your readers if you just type in that into your Google, you'll see a whole list of qualities that psychopath moms have. And if you've had one, then you need to heal too. <laughs> right, because so, it is about healing. It, it, and it's Catholic all about healing. work is about healing and, um, and moving forward, transcending issues that are blocking you. Um, and finding list- out yeah, why, why, why you're involved with certain love situations. Right. I've had, because I've just gotten a PhD in psychopaths, um, because of my two and a half years with my last, uh, friend. Um, I, I now understand and can identify it. So just yesterday, I had a client who is, has been involved with the same kind of personality who is totally self-absorbed. And what they do is try to destroy you ultimately for their own pleasure and for their own power and I was immediately able to say this is what the situation is and she went oh my god I've been to therapist after therapist and then I showed her all the research and the books and she's and I said now this is what you're going to do and when we do the regression which we will do in number three she'll understand why she needed this opportunity right. and there's it's an opportunity to see your life from a different perspective and then the past life regression allows a person, once that life dies, to go to the in-between and to meet your own soul, to meet your own soul group. And the soul groups have different purposes. I'm a healer communicator. You're a, a communicator. We're probably from the same kind of cluster because you're a communicator too and healer communicator. And then you meet the, then you meet your uh, guide. And the guide then tells you, gives you your, essentially your marching orders. What, what are you here to achieve? Right. And in point of fact, once you find your purpose, once you find your passion, then you're happy because you're on, you know, you're doing what you're, you're meant to do. Right. You're in sync and so forth and everything you're with in sync. that. And, and we're going to, we're going to talk about all of this and more. Um, <laughs> you're listening to Dear James live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network. My guest is Uh, Stephanie Risley, Discovering Past Life Regression. We'll be right back after this station break.
desire to be more consciously enlightened is innate. Do you feel there's more to life? If so, find the resource that's right for you by going to dearjames.com slash resources. You are the reality you create. Make it a great one. When you ask a question, the universe hears you, and in a multitude of ways, they seek to communicate with you to provide the intuitive insight, answers, and advice you seek. From serious to silly, monumental to mundane, there's nothing the universe can't cover. Maybe the insight you receive is exactly the affirmation you were looking for. Then again, it may just give you a whole new perspective on things. And that's the beauty of the universe. Submit your question to Dear James at DearJames.com and click Ask. The gift of giving is immeasurable. Give of your time, talent, resources, and money. Give not only because you can, but because by doing so, it is already coming back to you. As a people, we are only as strong as the least among us. Together, we harness the power of the collective whole and see through our deeds the power of miracles, both large and small. Find the charity that's right for you by visiting www.dearjames.com and click on Charitable Giving. One person or kind act really does make the difference. Welcome back, everyone. It's Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network. Today, my guest is Stephanie Risley. We're uh, discovering past life regression and the work that goes into it. And, you know, the crucial point that I want to, before I I bring Stephanie back on, is that I really want to convey to people that the work in regards to past life regression is so rewarding. And if you have not experienced it, you know, by all means, if you're in the Los Angeles area or and or via Skype and so forth, you know, reach out to Stephanie. Um, but if not, find a qualified practitioner in your area because the benefits are truly life transforming. And it's about looking at your past lives, not staying in that place, but looking at them to understand things that are happening in your current life, in your current incarnation. And Stephanie has been at this for a while, and I, I want to go back shortly or quickly if we can. But you know, it's it's uh, one of the epic things for you is that you studied with uh, Brian Weiss, and just to tell the listeners how you came to past life regression and the work with Brian Weiss and so forth as we move well, forward in our discussion. Well, the uh, what happened for me is that I. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let me go back to the fact that my husband, who was, as I said, a lawyer and a scientist, died in my arms. And um, um, in 2001, December 26th, and he literally came back and chatted to me from the other side. I was uh, totally bereft and nuts and a widow, and I work with a lot of widows. And then started, I could... Um, and I wrote a book about that. That book is on my website and at Amazon. It's called Love from Both Sides, A True Story of Soul Survival and Sacred Sexuality. Because he came back and he would have this wild sex with me and talk about what we were meant to do. Because we did not meet until we were till I was 42 and he was 49. And he asked me to marry him on the fourth day. Date. Now that was always a good story, but in point of <laughs> fact, we used when we on our first date, we realized that we lived around the corner from each other in 1970 in Berkeley, and that's when our souls were supposed to meet because he actually had ordered me in the in between to come and 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 he wanted us to have a male female life together because in point of fact we use I usually come in as a guy. I'm very, and that's why I drove a cab. So I drove a cab in Manhattan for seven years and I just loved it. It was great. (laughs) (laughs) Love that. And 
when I was a little girl, I, I was a little tomboy. So, um, it, and, um, and so when my husband died, I, he, he said, you've got more work to do. And, and so you've got to write this book. I wrote the book. It, 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 it's a very embarrassing book, but it helps people heal. And, and he came back and chatted to me and led me through my own discovery of, of my own wiring, why I, um, why I was meant to do this work. And as I was telling you before the show, I mean, right before he died, he handed me uh, an email from a crazy client of his who was doing a uh, a hypnotherapy training because I didn't start out to be a hypnotherapist. I mean, I, I'm a writer. I was an actress. I was, a, you know, and I actually started out to be a doctor and then I got sick and then I just, you know, went and became an actress in New York and did, you, you know, my life snakes around the way everybody else's life does. I was does. just going to say, it's like the fabric. You, you think that you're going to be one thing and you start out only to discover your purpose, your passion. But you, but you, and you have to go through, you have to trust the thrust of your life. Absolutely. The research shows that people who set their intentions and go through Harvard and then get that job, at the, the, they're miserable by the time they're 34. Because they haven't opened to what their soul wants them to do. And right. so my soul, and that it was, was, I, all I wanted to do, I just died in Auschwitz right before, and you know, probably 1944, 45, and I was born in 47. So I wanted, I wanted a resting life. I, hello, I did not get one. But <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you were, you were quite a, a quick turnaround. You, you know, you're like, I was wait, 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 wait. Quick... I wasn't done with this yet. I wasn't. No, I was. I mean, you know, but I, you know, that's the way I, that's the way my soul plays. I mean, I, right. I, 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 I kind of am bored in the in between. I like the action down here. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, there's a lot of, right. There's a lot of experiencing going on. I mean, well, it's the way right, it's, I mean, I'm sorry, but driving cab for seven years in Manhattan. Oh, that's, that's, that's interacting. With oh, honey, that toughened the, the little girl from Toluca Lake right up, <laughs> man. Boy, did that, did that toughen me up and that, but that everything that happened to me in my, in my past is every ounce of, I use with all my clients because I've had drug dealers as clients. I've, I mean, I have to be tough. I mean, I have uh, half of my clientele is, uh, are the, they're men. I mean, uh, it always shocks the women when I tell them that they go, men really like this work. I mean, I change. They're so fragile. Men are so fragile. So anyway, and I know men are so fragile because my husband, who was a gigantic man, died in my arms, came back, chatted, and then I uh, wrote this book. The book got itself published by Findhorn Press, a very prestigious imprint, and it's um, and that was magical. I mean, it just and then. I went and studied with Brian Weiss, but I, I studied with Brian Weiss before the book got published. So, and Brian is an old friend. As soon as I saw him, it was like we, I knew who he was. He knew who I was. I saw him look at his wife, who's a doll. Her name's Carol and go, yeah. Cause I, I'd had, I had all the markings I had when I was 19. I nearly died. I went to the in between. I wanted to die. I was done with life. Life had not been so good. And so I was done, but I got once I saw the bright light I was I they it was like I wanted to go home but my body pulled me back and at that moment I knew that I would live and for whatever purpose and I it took me a while to find that purpose but finding uh, uh, the purpose in life is the quest and once you find it and that's why past life regression is so helpful because you see that you, you, once you get to the in between, you hear your purpose. And sometimes people are resistant to their purpose. I have a client who's, um, uh, I'm about to write a blog about this. And if your listeners will go to my website, it's stephanierisley.com and look at the blogs. The, um, <clears throat> the, 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 the blog I'm about to write is just literally, I'm just going to write to the cut and paste her regression with um and uh, which I've had permission from and so she came I'm going to call her Susan so Susan came to me a couple of years ago when her 35 year old husband just dropped dead healthy and uh, and dropped dead on a golf course and she was um 34 at the time and over the past two years she is has found that she's keeping her 
power under this tiny little, in a little cup. She's a six foot tall, beautiful, blonde, blue eyed goddess. And she just plays it small. And she plays it small, she realized, because she's got a big job to do. And she's, and there's a part of her that's somewhat afraid of that job because she's a healer. And in so many of her lifetimes, she has been, she has been killed. She has been murdered. She's been, um, for being a, uh, for being a, uh, a healer. And so she, she wanted, she wanted a break. But in th- this, the last, regression that we did and i wanted to find out why she was so afraid of her own power she saw a life where if um where she was really a bad person and if i if i could she she had a pathological she was a a a psychopath brain and james fallon's book the psychopath within or inside allows you to see a psychopathic brain from a different perspective too. It's part of the continuum of our brain and we sort of, we, uh, of the human brain. But she had no conscience in that past life and because she had no conscience in that past life, she did some despicable, horrible things and she was really uncomfortable with that. And that's, and then, let me just say something too, yeah. because that's, that's also something that people don't realize is that, you know, you look at yourself in this lifetime and, you know, oh, I'm a good person. And, you know, and, and in your example, mm-hmm. you know, showing with your mother and everything, mm-hmm. oh, I was responsible for, you know, decapitating her for actually, uh-huh. you know. And so you realize that while you, yes, you may be this amazingly wonderful, good person in this lifetime, in a past lifetime, you have done acts that were less than good, but they're playing out a purpose and a point in the, in the evolution of the soul group or, or the, the, uh, the interacting souls, if you will. Right. There's, there's light and dark. It, you must accept the shadow side of yourself. You, I mean, because you can always choose. I mean, that's the nature of our, our journey. There is, it, it's always a choice. You could have chosen to ignore your soul and just keep doing, you know, being fabulously uh, successful in real estate. Right. Or you could have chosen, I mean, they, they knocked you upside the head. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, and, yeah. and, I, and that's why I say, I mean, it, it's really quite extraordinary because they, for me, the universe literally put me on lockdown with, with my real estate and everything. Just said, nope, it's not going to yeah. happen. It's over. It's done. Right. Per se. And mm-hmm. until I did Dear James, until I really came forward. And it was an amazing thing to then look through the lives, you know, through the past life work. And, and we did pro, uh, future life progression, which I also want to get into. Okay, great. But, but it was an interesting thing that when you do this work and, and when you're working with a practitioner like Stephanie, there's a point where you begin to see, as you're saying, your, your, your good self, your shadow self, mm-hmm. and you have choices to make in how those past lives are affecting your current life, and whether you choose to transcend, whether you choose to align yourself by by utilizing those components of the past lives. Yeah, now, and I'm just thinking of my own direct past life, which is very omnipresent because it I have a lot of the same qualities of this 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 rich Jewish doctor when I was a child. Uh, first of all, you know, my, I wouldn't, I wouldn't settle for anything but the best. I mean, my parents used to get upset. I would order fi- filet mignon and I would, you'd go out. I'd have a shrimp cocktail filet. That was what I wanted. I didn't want anything else. And, right. I, and my, they used to tease me. I could tell the difference between butter and margarine at three months old. So. <laughs> I wouldn't have I would margarine, but in my past life, literally, and you go around with the same, the same um, group of about two hundred souls, and in that past life, I was Rothschild rich, so very, very, very wealthy, and um, and yet I was a doctor, and I enjoyed my work, and I and I had bleed through dreams at, when I was three, and I would say that they were in when I was a young doctor in World War One, and so by the time the 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 Nazis started coming to um, to power. I was a very entrenched uh, Berlin doctor and who had, um, I had a wife and that wife was a good wife and she was my best friend in high school. And when I met my best friend Jane, I fell so in love with her. I thought I was gay. I mean, 
Right, because there was such a connection. There was such you. a connection. I the joyousness of being with her is was just so fun. I mean, we just had such a good time together. But she was my wife in that past life. But I also had a daughter who was my be- other best friend, Lynn, who uh, oh, I met at Disney in 1990 when we were both writers there. And then I had a mistress. Too, because I was a, and that mistress was a blonde, blue-eyed, um, gorgeous uh, chorus girl, who was uh, my ex Puerto Rican boyfriend. I will not name his name, right? <laughs> but you could go on. right. No, no, no. <laughs> you know. So um, <laughs> anyway, bless his heart, right. and he was, and so I met him two and a half years ago, and when we connected, we were on fire together. But my, but he, in that past life, um, um, he outed me to the, when, when it looked like the, uh, the, the tide was turning, like so many of my contemporaries, I sent all my money ahead to New York as much as I could get out of the country to feather my bed in New York. And I wanted to take care of my mistress. So I, I bought her a house and, um, and I told her the plan of that we were leaving and she outed me to the gestapo because she was also sleeping with the gestapo of course right right and that's that's that was normal and so she was responsible for my winding up in auschwitz and i died angry and i died wanting to kill her so in this lifetime all the, the, the soul work that I had to do, that I had to do left, because you sort of have this checklist, was to forgive her entirely or forgive him. And when I met him, he had some personality issues and <laughs> gave me. And so, but I, my job was to love him unconditionally and to encourage him and then finally just let it go, which I was able to do after two and a half years, but it took those two and a half years. Right, because there's certainly work, again, and we talk about this, and, I, and I'm stressing this point with, with mm-hmm. the listeners, that past life regression is as, as fascinating as it is and it sounds. And when you're listening to discovering these lives and, and seeing how they're playing out, the point of past life regression is the work. It's the work that you do that in order to understand what was the dynamic, what was taking place in this previous lifetime with this soul or those souls mm-hmm. and who are they in this lifetime and what's the residual factors left over? What are the things that are playing out? Mm-hmm. That, Cause it explains so much sometimes. I mean, there, there was, there was one where I understood um, the dynamic between that. And I saw it very vividly and, mm-hmm. and I understood that my mother was my wife. So my mother in this lifetime was my wife in that time. And right. my sister in this lifetime was my daughter. Right. And when I saw that and it, that life and that instant, it explained besides, you know, initially it was, what I was, was in that my, life that you were in. Uh, what, it was, a, it was in, uh, you know, kind of mid century England, old England. Right. You know, we were, I wouldn't say aristocratic, but well, you know, we mm-hmm. up, upper well, you know, established and so forth. And, and it was just a point of understanding. And that was early in my experience with past life regression work and, so it kind of, you know, as, as for anyone, it kind of freaked me out at first. I was like, oh, oh, that's so strange. And what? And then as I let it settle in, I kind of understood. And all of a sudden, I started looking at how it explained so many dynamics for me in the way that we interact in this lifetime mm-hmm. and, and our relationships and our closeness or our, you know, and, and things where, you know, there are many times where my mother will say, Oh, your, your daughter, I mean your sister. And it's right. very funny because <laughs> oh, she's, you know, I'd never mentioned it to her, but that would be her, her default sometimes. And I would, mm-hmm. and it all just made a lot of sense. But we need to go to a quick commercial break. So you're listening to Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network. My guest today is Stephanie Risley. She's a Los Angeles based hypnotherapist, and we're discovering past life regression. We'll be back after this station break.
available for private, individual, group, and corporate consultations. Dear James will provide you with the intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Schedule your consultation by going to www.dearjames.com and click on Consultation. The gift of giving is immeasurable. Give of your time, talent, resources, and money. Give not only because you can, but because by doing so, it is already coming back to you. As a people, we are only as strong as the least among us. Together, we harness the power of the collective whole and see through our deeds the power of miracles, both large and small. Find the charity that's right for you by visiting www.dearjames.com and click on Charitable Giving. One person or kind act really does make the difference. When you ask a question, the universe hears you. And in a multitude of ways, they communicate to you the intuitive insight, answers, and advice you seek. Ask Dear James a question and experience the magic of the universe. Visit DearJames.com and click Ask. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network. We are talking about discovering past life regression with Stephanie Risley. She is an L.A.-based hypnotherapist and doing multifaceted work um, with hypnotherapy and past life regression and future life progression, which I also want to touch on. But, Stephanie, what I want to do, because as we're, we're coming into the closing end of the show, I want to talk to our listeners about when they come to you, that there's a, a set minimum, meaning you must, you must sign up to do the work. And I keep talking about that. So you must sign up to do the work and that you really stage this, if you will, or present this in a five session series that they're committing to five sessions and kind at of least. walk. Right, exactly. At a, at a bare minimum, um, you're committing to five sessions and that, you know, kind of walking through that first session, what happens? Well, in the first hour of the first session, all I do is explain the brain to the client from the perspective of the newest brain research and the Neuropsychiatric Institute, which is where I worked for um, four years doing the primary research that became the DSM-3 revised, which is what a psychiatrist uses to categorize people into disorders. The newest brain research proves that that form of categorizing isn't actually authentic and the way they treat them with drugs is actually harmful. What is helpful to a a client is cognitive behavioral modification and awareness therapy. So I teach them about how their brain works and then give them a, a brain exercises with a CD that I make for them to help them begin to analyze their thought patterns and to delete the thought patterns, the behaviors, and the beliefs that are sabotaging them. And then in the second session... Oh, and before that, before you go to the second one, I want to say mm-hmm. to you, the, and the first one, so listeners understand that when she's talking to you about the brain, and, and because I've, I've gone to Stephanie, and that's why I'm kind of interjecting, you know, yeah. um, it's that you need, you'll realize that she's teach you not only about the brain, but about the, the underlining awareness of it's under your power, your control Absolutely. To, to modify your beliefs, to, to monitor your brain, your thoughts. And then thereby, that is step one in her process of become aware of what you're thinking, of what your habits are, of what you're doing. Yes. Um, and that's, that's kind of, that's what the newest brain research proves actually change your changes your brain there's so many books about this i could i could it would take a right. syllabus that would be 5 pages long but so i did 6 years of jungian dream analysis at the neuropsychiatric institute and so i use in the second session i use a jungian uh, dream analysis combined with some other things cuz i've been at, in this healing work of my own for 40 years to help people access 
the sorrow of their inner three-year-old and the anger of their inner 13-year-old and attach to the wisdom of their future 86-year-old self because everything that you do today, James, and your clients or, and, your, and your listeners, everything that we do will affect our future self. Every moment, every thought, every choice. Uh, and so when you have that, who do I want to be when I'm 86? And, and for, and just it, really what I want my clients, for my clients is for them to die used up and proud. And so in, that's what happens in the third session. By the first, after the first two sessions with me, I'm able to, um, diagnose. I'm an amazing diagnostician, if I if I say so myself, because I can. I'll just hear what people say, and I'll go, "Well, is this, 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 and this?" And they go, "How did you know that?" And I actually don't know how I know that, but but I can say, "Let's work on that." And then they, and then in the, um, and then the third session. And they'll be able to tell me whether they've been sexually abused, whether they've been verbally abused, whether this has happened, that's happened. And then by the third session, because I have to know that, that's why you can't walk into my office and say, I want to do a past life regression because I don't want to hit anything that I don't know I'm going to hit. And in the third session, that's when you're relaxed enough, you know that the place is safe and I'm, I'm, I'm who I am. I'm not going to change who I am. Um, and then I sit right next to you. I tap on your forehead. I take you down into a garden. I take you into um, a very deep hypnosis, hypnotic state where you are relaxed. You see your own birth. I access, you have access to every emotion, every event, and you were conscious in the, in utero and you can feel what your mother is feeling. You're connected to your mother. And, I, at that point, you could decide, did your mother want you or not? A lot of times I have a lot of Asian girls who, and the mother looks at them and goes, oh, give it back. I wanted a boy. And that, once that well, happens. It's very cultural. It's a very, it's, it's very it's, cultural. It's ingrained in the DNA that yeah. there's this, these cultural things that are. Absolutely. In the DNA. That and, boys are more valuable than girls. And that, that's the first wound. Right. And if that's the first wound, if you feel less than because you didn't have a penis, then I have to go in and then I do what I call psychic, um, uh, CGI, you know, computer generated imagery. I get you as the client to go into your own birthing room and pick up your own baby self and you look at that baby and you heal that and you can literally reprogram that memory i mean that's what the newest brain re that's why memory is very plastic you can change a memory and why 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 carry around all this garbage from the past change your memories into things that help you right <laughs> right it, it, well exactly in, <laughs> in essence it's 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 being fluid and and something that was very i want to tie back quickly before we yeah. go uh-huh you know, uh, in one of Shirley MacLaine's books, and it was she mm -hmm. was doing. She had discovered past life regression work and so forth, mm -hmm. and she okay. she said that she, in essence, had this epiphany mm -hmm. that every thought, every action, everything that she did in this lifetime mattered because it was it wasn't only about as you say about the eighty six year old self, but mm -hmm. it was about the next lives that she was going to have and how if if she was able to see all of these past lives, if you will, and how they were influencing her current state of incarnation, mm -hmm. how her actions, how her mindful actions and awareness was going to influence her future lives. Mm -hmm. And that it was her, and she had, you know, she states, I had this epiphany that I was responsible. I'm responsible in this lifetime for what is to come. Absolutely. And it and was really profound. It was a profound statement and awareness. Yeah, no, she's, 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 she's an amazing woman. And, yeah. um, uh, and she has had a, a glorious, uh, incarnation and she'll be proud when she dies because, she, because she's from, you know, she's from the artistic, um, healing communicator clusters. Right. And then so once you see that, once you, then you see a past life, then that life dies. We go to the in between. You see your soul group. You find out your purpose. What's your purpose? And then you go after it. And then 
then in the fourth and the fifth sessions, I either do more past life regressions or I can do a future regression or I can do the healing love um, uh, CDs to help you love yourself, which the newest brain research proves and, and Bruce Lipton's work proves that the more you love yourself, the, the happier you are and the healthier you are. My new best friend is Martha Beck and I love her work and because she's um, she had the same kind of healing the the healer work that I had meaning you get beaten up beyond you know you die and then you come back and then you have to rebuild your life and then you see your work and she helps people heal and so um, the fifth sessions I you know I get people excited about this future and I do my abundance CD and all of these CDs are on my website you can just download them if you want it's it's not I mean people say well well it's is it like working with you no because I'm sitting there looking at you and I'll go you know and I'm I'm no nonsense so right. you're dealing with the cab driver I go oh really you think you can sleep with two married men and be happy? <laughs> I don't right. think so. No, exactly. And the, I remember and saying that to a woman. <laughs> and there's, and, you know, and, and something that I want to convey because we're, we're coming down to the, yeah, the closing point of the hour. Uh-huh. But, you know, when you're working with Stephanie, you know, she does also do the personalized, you know, their personalized abundance CDs, the inner yeah. child CD, the goal programming CD. You know, these are where she's literally in session with you and you're hearing her speak to you through headphones and so forth while you have the theta beta wave inducers. I got it right this time on, Mm -hmm. which are amazing. And, you know, so that there's there's opportunity there. And so. I just wanted to say uh, a is final closing statement, because we have like two minutes left, Stephanie, I just want to give you an opportunity before I wrap up the show. Come to Stephanie Risley because. Open to your purpose and your power and your passion, and that will make you happy. I, I opened a book um, by, uh, and I, it was, and it just says, "Make your living any way you want, but neglect no sacrifice at your chosen altar." It may break your heart. It may drive you half mad. It may betray you in unrealizable ambitions or blind you to mercantile opportunities with the wandering fires. But it will fill your heart before it breaks it. It will make you a person person in your own right. It will open the temple doors to you and enable you to walk with those who have come nearest among men to to what men may sometimes be. If the time arrives when our young men and women lose their extravagant faith in the dollar and turn to the arts, we may then become a great nation, nurturing great artists of our own, proud of our own culture and unified by that culture into the civilization worthy of our unique place in this rich and lucky continent and worth remembering perhaps when our wealth and our luck run out. That was written by Sherwin... Anderson in 1947, the year I was born. And I opened it this morning and I thought, what do I want to talk about? And that came to, that was, that opened. So the gods wanted people to hear Sherwood Anderson talking about 60 something years ago and our luck. And (laughs) we, we're at that point. It's a tipping point right now. Right. It's a tipping point. That's very true. It's a tipping true. point. And we all well, need to step up and do what we can in our own lives, in our own communities, and perfect. in and on our own streets. I agree. I agree. Well, Be it's kind. Been, it's been such a beautiful pleasure to have you on the show today. I thank you so much. And I just want to say in closing to all the listeners, you know, when you come in to do this work in past life regression work, be open, be raw, be vulnerable, be consciously aware of your pursuit of your alignment of your choices um, because this work is really incredibly powerful work um, past life regression work future life progression work that what you choose and what you what you do consciously choosing every moment of every day makes a difference it matters and to work with Stephanie is a privilege and so I can't thank you again Stephanie enough for being on the show um, Thank you. You're, you're so welcome. Thank you. And so as I say to everyone, it's always about choice. And it's always about the privilege that we have to make that choice. You are, as, as Stephanie often reminds her uh, clients, you are a soul with a body, not a body with a soul. And make conscious, wise, beautiful choices and do the work. And I'll leave you with my closing statement, as I always do, no matter whom you're with, or what you're doing, or where you are, 
wrap yourself in goodness. This has been Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network. We will see you back next week. You've been listening to Dear James Live on the radio with your host, Dear James. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com. 